Jen, you have uh, some very beautiful ships at Riverside and some people probably know their names already. Yes, yeah, because of course we got the entire uh, formal crystal fleet of river ships. Yeah. So we've got now the Riverside Mozart, the Riverside Debussy, the Riverside Bach, the Riverside Mahler, and the Riverside Ravel. And That's for 2023, 20, uh, we're going to sail the Mozart and the Ravel. In fact, you're already sailing, which I think is so surprising for people, as uh, you and I were talking earlier. Riverside really only, right? Well, you hit the ground running, obviously, and you've yeah. started sort of one step up with, you know, beautiful ships that many people know and love so well. But nonetheless, it's a bit of an amazing journey that Riverside has been on from the acquisition of, uh, of you know, first one, and then it turns out all of the former crystal ships to mm -hmm. already less than a year later, you're already sailing. Yeah, it really, I mean, the speed with which we've got into market and established some um, love of the brand. I mean, we were just at the Asta River Cruise Expo in Budapest, and I have to say, I was blown away by the reception. I, I mean, I was doing tours on the ship, on the Mozart, and I would be coming around the corner, and people's faces would be like, oh, like, I can't believe how beautiful this ship is. And I was like, yeah, she is that great. I mean, uh, about 80% of the uh, crew are former Crystal that worked on the Mozart. Mm -hmm. So we were definitely ready to hit the ground running. The Ravel will start sailing on the Rhone in June. And then, of course, we're going to flow in two more ships next year and then get our fifth ship in the water by 2025. People love river cruising, yet people are always looking for something new. And we want to be that something new, for sure. Right. So let's back up. I mean, when we first heard the news that there was a purchaser for at least one, initially of the former crystal ships uh we had heard it was a german owner and it sounded like this would be basically just for the german market but also since you're here clearly also to the north american market and that was certainly news to me yeah so the parent company seaside collection they are a european slash you know german hotel luxury hotel operator but when the family looked at getting into river cruise they knew if you really want to be a real large viable branded river cruise, um, you really need the American market, the North American market. It's important. So it's an English speaking experience. All the announcements, everything is in English. It is an English speaking experience. Uh, Are the ships the same? Have any changes been made to the ships in terms of hardware? You say 80% of the crew are returning uh, crystal employees. So that's uh, amazing that they're already familiar with the ships and, and they're bringing presumably a very similar uh, type of experience to the table. So is the hardware very similar? Were there many changes made to the ship? Very little changes. As you know, Crystal put a lot of money into the Mozart um, just back in 2016. It only, you know, was sailing 17 to 19 into 20, you know, not even into 20. And then of course the others are new builds and they're all mm -hmm. sister ships. So the Bach, the Mahler, mm -hmm. the Debussy and the Ravel, those were all new builds that only sailed two to three years. So we didn't feel we had to do much to the hardware. Obviously, if anything needed to be spruced up. I think the main mm -hmm. difference you would see, uh, especially those who came and experienced the Mozart already, is on the sky deck, the Vista deck. That was an area that Crystal just kind of underutilized. They just didn't really encourage you know, people to go up there as much, even though they had that cool pop-up bar. The right. one's on the, one of the sister ships. Um, but we want to utilize that because we also want to appeal to a younger river cruise traveler. And we feel like that part of the ship is really the most magical. I mean, to be out up on the sky deck and sailing in a beautiful day down the Danube or, you know, in the future on the Rhone or the Rhine, that's where people really, really enjoy and really feel that they're doing something very different than they can do in any other style of travel. So we've updated the furniture up there, added some pop of color. We've added two green eggs so we can do a barbecue lunch up there. Nice. We've got bikes on board now. So that is part of our strategy of appealing to, of course, we want to appeal to the formal crystal client with the service and everything, you know, that they've come to expect, mm -hmm. but we want to take it one step further. We want to infuse even more fun. We want to be the line that attracts new River Cruise uh, clients. Excellent. Uh, so I will first of all say that I 100% agree. Many, many, many of my favorite memories sailing are outdoors. And I want to return to the idea of service as well. It, it appears that Riverside is um, also going to have butler service. Um, yes. So tell and us every suite, mm -hmm. every suite, butler service in every suite. And I think a lot of times, especially with the North American market, the idea of a butler is kind of like, oh, do I need a butler? I mean, what do butlers do? What do I do with my butler, right? So many people ask me, what do I do? No, with I, don't my want, I don't want 
I want them to unpack my clothes. They don't need to unpack your clothes if you'd like them to. Think of a butler as a personal concierge, right? Think of them as someone who's going to help your cruise be perfection for you. Uh, maybe you say, hey, when you come back after an excursion every day, it'd be really great if you had some extra cold Diet Cokes waiting in your room. Or it's really important that they know that after you do come back from an excursion, you always love to take a little nap. So you'd like quiet time. Or when you get into a town, um, this would be really important to you. Or actually really just anything on the ship. You don't want to be like, oh, who do I ask for this? Who do I ask for that? You know who you ask? You ask your butler. Your butler will go get the answer for you. And so you don't feel like you're chasing people during your cruise. Who do I ask? You know, I want to know about shore excursions. They might come back and say, hey, this is who you speak to. But use them. Use them so that you can just enhance and personalize your cruise. What other experiences are pretty unique to Riverside or that really stand out from, from a Riverside point of view? Um, dining, for example. <clears throat> dining. Let's talk about the dining. Yes. Listen, this is what I say about river cruising. Anytime you get on a river cruise, oh, we all do an amazing job. I mean, this category is upmarket, right? So you're not going to get on a river cruise and have bad food. You're going to have good food. I think Crystal came in and had, um, they definitely had great food. Riverside wants to be exceptional. The parent company not only owns hotels, but also restaurants. We are putting a lot, much more budget to procure the most, you know, local, fresh, high quality ingredients. The ships by design have larger galleys. We have more chefs on board. We cook everything a la minute, as uh, the owner likes to say. Mm -hmm. We have 24 hour room service. We have multiple dining menus. Very bangers. unusual for very unusual. unusual so, because you know, at times, especially especially if you're younger, you might have gone out into town. Now you're back on your ship, and you know mm -hmm. what? You want some French fries at midnight and a really good burger. You can get that on Riverside, which is awesome. And believe me, I tested that, and it <laughs> and <laughs> it, really it works. Delivers. It really works because of course, uh, some, there some long go. days during mm -hmm. Asta. But I think that's the whole idea is that you really, we want to be the line for foodies and culinary. Right, let's talk about shore. Um, is there anything that Riverside is doing differently? Are there more overnights? You talked about going out on the town. So are there more overnights? What are, what does shore experience look like? Um, yep. Are they included or are there are there unique experiences for, for a Riverside yep. guest? So what's first unique about Riverside is that we do have different levels of pricing. You could really price it. So if you just want to use the, the ship as your hotel with no excursions or drink package included, you could do that. Add on a drink package, add on excursions. I like to, especially for the North American market, really talk about the all-inclusive. Mm -hmm. So that is the ship, all the amenities. There's only a few additional things, you know, that are extra like a spa service or the vintage room, which we can talk about. Mm -hmm. um, but it is your choice of excursions in every port. We're going to do some more daytime sailing, which obviously mm -hmm. will leave us some more time at night. We're to also take your wine up on that top deck. Yes. Right? Yes. The bar yeah. behind you. Got yes, that. right? Wine and, right it, there. Mm -hmm. um, and also just give you choice mm -hmm. of excursions. So there's active or taste or cultural so you so whatever your flavor is however you choose to experience and those are going to be included we're going to have optionals just like any other line right because mm -hmm. think about it say a day all day excursion to Salzburg you're not going to include that not everybody wants to do that so the optionals will be along the line where they're like maybe extra super special like maybe a helicopter ride right or an all-day trip but you will get a choice of excursions in every port with your all-inclusive pricing. So right now the Mozart is sailing <clears throat> yep. on the Danube. And yep. uh, there's one more ship sailing this year. Yeah, so the Ravel is going to get onto the Rhone in June. You know, Crystal was never in the south of France. So definitely consider looking at the Ravel on the Rhone. Crystal was never in the south of France. So that is an absolutely new experience that they can come on if you're former Crystal. Mm -hmm. And then for people just new to River Cruise, we are going to be getting our 2024 pricing out there. Ravel and Mozart are already out there, but we're going to be getting the Debussy and the Bach. And they are going to do that Rhine and Mosul and Netherlands and Upper Danube. So all those other quintessential river cruise destinations that we're not offering in 23 will be available in 24 on Riverside. Are many or most right now of your existing guests, are they previously with Crystal? Is this is this homecoming week for Crystal guests? Uh, or are you already seeing uh, people who uh, may, perhaps never sailed with Crystal or never sailed river cruises at all? Um, already already coming we're definitely getting some formal crystal 
but other people have said, oh, I wanted to give River Cruising a try. And really our pricing right now, because we are so new, I mean, we've got what I'm calling kind of, you know, introductory, inaugural, you know, pricing that is really, really competitive, especially for how beautiful the ships are, how comfortable and spacious the suites are, and how inclusive the experience is. So right now, uh, North American guests can already book a Riverside cruise uh, into 2024. Is that correct? That's correct. Currently on the Mozart and Ravel, and then we'll get Debussy and Bach. And so I encourage you, if you are especially new to River Cruise, go get yourself a good advisor. They're going to they're gonna give you the lay of the land. They're going to be able to kind of see what your travel preference is and match you up with the right brand, because that is what we want. We at Riverside do want to appeal to a younger River Cruiser. There's a lot of interest in European River Cruising, um, an interest that you know, doesn't seem to be slowing down. In fact, if anything, I think it was maybe yeah. one of the best kept almost secrets is how amazing European river cruising is. So I really do think that there's so many more people who who want to try it or want to try a new version of it. And and European river cruising is just, you know, only onwards and upwards from there. I agree. I agree. That's why I love it so much. That's why I stayed in it. You know, I mean, I, if it's, I don't think there's another style that can replicate it even a really nice hotel, a really beautiful hotel. You're in one city, right? Mm -hmm. But the intimacy on the ship and the crew gets to know you. I mean, literally at the end of a seven day, uh, you know, seven night river cruise, you feel like family and you really do connect at a human level on river cruise, I think better than any other style. And I think now as we, you know, kind of emerge from where we've been, human connection is more important than ever. And river cruising really delivers that. I couldn't agree more. So congratulations on the launch Thanks. of the side cruises. And, uh, and I can't wait to see where you go from here. And, and as the new ships, you know, arrive in new rivers, um, what the new experiences will be and, and, and riversides, uh, you know, how it all unfolds uh, to, to cruisers. So good luck and congratulations. Thank you so well, much. Thank you so much, Lynn.